It's Nicole with Healthy Pet and talking about brushing your dog's coat out. Uh, with brushing your dog's coat out, you can do this every single day. Uh, this is not something that you can only do once a week or, or even less often and it's recommended that you do it once a week or once a day for 10 to 20 minutes because it gives you a chance to touch your dog, rub your hands over your dog's body and see if there's anything that you notice that's changed. Um, it's a good time to spend with bonding with your dog, but also checking for any sort of new growth, um, hot spots, um, parasites, any sort of growth for older animals, looking for fatty tumors or any sort of lumps or bumps. Um, when you do brush out your dog, there's lots of different types of tools and the tool that you use will depend on the type of coat that your dog has. Uh, some basic tools though are a slicker brush for dogs that have coats that can mat and get tangles. Um, there's a bristle brush, which is pretty much for every type of dog coat that there is, bristle brush works really well. Uh, there are combs for getting into the finer areas next to the face. And there's burgers. Um, there's two different types of shedding tools. Uh, Ferminator is the name brand of the one that uses a metal blade. <clears throat> and then there's also a plastic one. And that's a little bit more gentle, but when we talk about the Furminator, we'll go over that as well. Um, okay. Before we talk about anything with brushing, though, I always like to go over giving a bath. A bath can be done as much as once a week. Uh, you should do it at least once a month if you're not going to do it once a week. For dogs that have some serious skin issues, when you're using the correct shampoo on them, so dogs that have a really bad yeast, uh, issue on their skin, you can do it every couple of days, but if your dog has normal great skin and everything's going great, once a week is, is about good, and then like I said, up to once a month, um, but a little bit more often keeps them smelling good, keeps them more cuddly, so that you want to spend that time with them, and keeps them from having that doggy odor. With shampooing, here in our grooming facility, we do bathe two times. We do the first time as a general cleanser to get off any sort of dirt, oil, debris, and these two products would be good as base shampoos for at-home cleansing. This deep cleanser works really well for dogs that are very active during the, the summertime, so going to the forest preserve, running around, um, going into lakes because there's a little bit of a funkiness that happens with dogs that jump into to lakes. So this is a really nice deep cleanser that strips out all of that nastiness. This one's a little bit more gentle, but again, pulls off all of that ickiness that just happens over time, just like we shower every day-ish. <laughs> so uh, this gives you a chance to get that base layer off of your dog. From there, there's lots of shampoos that have different different point, uh, purposes to them. The tea tree oil is really good for dogs that have any sort of allergy, hot spots, itchiness. Uh, the Buddy Wash just smells really good. It has lavender, so it's a little bit more calming for dogs. So dogs that are easily stressed during the bath. This isn't going to be like a super intense, it's not like giving your dog a drug to calm them down. But lavender is an essential oil, it smells really nice, and again, just kind of takes them down a notch or two. Uh, the Maro just smells really, really good. They uses the hemp and argan oils, so it's very conditioning. Uh, it feels really nice. They make a nice spray and conditioner that you can use throughout the week or in between baths. Uh, Filthy Beast also smells really good, and this is a great product to use uh, when you are going to be de-shedding your dog. So this is a, a product that we'll refer back to again when we talk about um, shedless treatments and what we do here in our grooming department and what you're able to do at home with um, with your supplies that you have available. Okay. Buster. So this is Buster. Uh, for his hip coat, we would use a pin brush. Pin brush. And just going over his coat, because it doesn't really have huge harsh bristles or anything to it, and his coat is a nice short coat, I can go over him and I can feel for any sort of bumps or any of those weird things. And as I'm going over him, going with the grain of his coat, I can look and see if he has anything missing any hair anywhere. He isn't, so this is kind of a, a quick brush. 
but again, moving my hands all over him, seeing where uh, the, the brush catch it, catches, if it does, uh, and if it were to catch on something, I wouldn't want to just yank on it because he's a short haired dog. I would stop, take a look, and see if he has something there. And that's about how you use a bristle brush. Now for him, he tends to shed a little bit. So when you pull on your dog's coat, not really super hard, you can see like how much hair you can pull off. I don't know if you guys can see that, but he does shed a bit. The slicker brush really isn't going to do too much for him. The brushing him, uh, the bathing him with the shedless treatment and blowing that into his coat and then from there using a furminator type tool on him will be the best as far as getting out undercoat and getting out all that extra stuff and that's what works for his coat if you want to do the de-shedding. If you're not worried about de-shedding or there really isn't much hair to pull off for the de-shedding then just the bath and the bristle brush, brush will work out just fine. This is Jilly. So she is more of a dog that has um, is going to need more tools for brushing her out. So the slicker brush really works well for pulling out any sort of mats and tangles. And if you're not sure if your dog has any mats and tangles, you can always start with the slicker brush and see if you get caught anywhere. Uh, not using a whole lot of force when I do brush. Just going nice, even pace, going with the grain of her hair. Let me take off her collar. Collar is a good place for tangles to start, depending on how often you brush your dog. Yeah. And when you find a nasty tangle, there's a couple of different options. You can brush it out with a slicker. Um, you can try to work on it with a comb. Or if it's too matted and nasty, you can always uh, shave it out or have your groomer shave it out. We don't recommend just cutting out mats, um, taking scissors to your dog's coat. Uh, if your dog squirms and you're not necessarily prepared or comfortable, it's very easy to cut your dog's skin, especially cats too. Cats have even thinner skin than dogs do. So always make sure that you're shaving it out with a proper tool or having a groomer do that part for you. As you brush her coat, you can see it gets a lot softer looking because we've taken out all those tangles. On her little butt area, the slicker can be a little bit too harsh with those bristles. Uh, so if, if that is my only tool, I'll want to go a lot softer on that area. So she gets something that's called a lion cut. I think it looks really cute. <laughs> So it got a lot softer on that part, but otherwise I would switch to either just a comb because it is so short that I'm just checking to make sure that it doesn't get stuck on anything. Yes, hello, Jelly. Actually, this is where for grooming, we would use the grooming arm. Use a comb on her back area or use the bristle brush. Again, there's no mats. I'm not expecting any mats. I'm brushing her to stimulate her skin and to check to see that there isn't any sort of, again, blockage. Uh, the stimulating of the skin, this just happens, you know, when you brush your own hair, when you rub your hair, if you look into dry rubbing, dry brushing on your own skin, that's what you're accomplishing with your dogs. Just getting the blood flowing and spreading out the, the naturally occurring oil that happens on the skin that keeps the skin healthy. 
So going back to the slicker brush on the parts of her hair that are longer. I know, I know you're such a goofball. Okay, so you can see again how her hair looks. And then I've got a mat right here. So with this mat, I can either grab it right here above, above the mat so I'm not yanking on her skin because no dog's gonna like that. And brush that out. Depending on the mat, I can also take the comb. <laughs> Hi. Right there. I can also take the comb and work that mat out. Again, I'm holding the hair so that I'm not pulling on the dog's skin. And just working that mat out from the base of it. Uh, that's closest to the end of the hair and just working it so that I can get that mat out of her hair. Yes. Yes. All done. So that got that mat out and then I don't have to have her shaved. If I have that mat and it started off really super tiny and I ignored it and ignored it and ignored it, it's very easy to get that to the point where now that mat has to be completely shaved. And then I wouldn't have a little lion cut for her anymore. I have to start over from scratch. But just simply helping my groomer out by doing that part will keep her nice and fluffy the way that I like it. I uh, will also use the comb up by her face. I don't want to take a big tool like the slicker brush up near her face because it's a little bit harder to see everything. And she does have some matting by her face. I'm obviously not grabbing from above because I do have to hold her head, but I'm taking smaller, more gentle strokes to work those mats out. There we go. So you hold your dog's head however you feel comfortable. You want to ensure that you're protected so that if you have a dog that's more nervous that you're not gonna put yourself into harm's way and have your dog bite at you. Uh, with grooming, we oftentimes find that dogs that are more nervous with their owner are not nervous with us or um, behave better. And part of it can be with the fact that our groomers are trained, so they have a certain confidence that they bring to working with your dog. And your dog also knows you and knows what they can get away with. Sort of like a kid, um, you know, they can get away with certain behavior and they, you know, you will stop the brushing if they have any sort of mats. Uh, so that's another way that our groomers can really help supplement what it is that you're doing at home. Um, and again, doing this once a day, which I obviously have not done for Miss Jilly B here because we wouldn't be running into so many mats if I were doing it pretty, a lot more consistently. But once a, once a day up to once a week, we'll keep her mat free so that I don't have any sort of uh, issues when it's time for her to come to the groomer and get a full haircut. And again, for Buster Brown, with the short haired dog, I'm doing it once a day. It's like a five minute process. Making it longer is just that bonding and spending time with him that's fun. Yes. He doesn't need anything more than that. <coughs> yeah, with the doesn't need anything more than that beyond what I'm going to do for him for Shedder. So again, the Furminator tool. We light the Furminator and we do use it in our grooming department when we do shedless treatments here. Um, in general, when people do the Furminator, a uh, caution that we give is that it's very easy to rub too hard onto your dog's skin and to cause an irritation on their coat. So we do have a plastic version. The plastic version is less expensive and it is slightly less effective than the original original tool, but depending on who all in the household is going to be using the Furminator or the, the de-shedding type tool, it might be better to get the one that is the plastic and is less effective because you're less likely to irritate your dog's skin or have somebody irritate. Uh, when you do irritate the, your dog's skin, we can see that his skin is white going against the grain. And when people 
use the Furminator incorrectly, that skin will become red and irritated, will also get a little inflamed, and it can also uh, weep where it has that clear liquid from overstimulation, from being scratched too hard. So that is a caution that we do use with the Furminator tool. If it's only going to be one person in the household who ever uses it, we're perfectly happy to help train you to use it efficiently and effectively on your dog's coat. Um, or, as I said, we do carry the, a plastic one. Um, unfortunately, I don't have my demo model right now, but we do have it and we'll post it a little bit later in um, comments or something to, to let everybody know what that one looks like. Uh, and we'll give a little demonstration as to how much hair can come out when you do a shedless treatment on your dog. Um, we like to show those pictures in our grooming department because it's amazing that you can get out another dog. <laughs> uh, our results will be slightly different than what people's home results will be with the shedless treatment because we do have a high powered blow dryer here as well. But again, when we do a shedless video, we'll go over that. In the meantime, there's combs, there are uh, flicker brushes, there are bristle brushes, there are furminators. There's a couple of other different types of tools too, but we find that for the most part, this will cover everybody's uh, needs. There's, but one of them is a undercoat rake. There's also a, a de-shedding blade that is not near as effective as the furminator, but it's a nice tool, especially for goldens when it's just like go outside and watch the hair fly away in the breeze. Uh, so those are two additional tools that people can use that in their grooming supply kit. So again, just a quick little demo about brushing out your dog and doing it once a week at, um, at minimum, but once a day for 10 to 20 minutes, lets you touch your dog's coat and spread the oils, keep the skin nice and healthy. You bathe, maximum of once a week, unless you have skin issues, minimum of once a month. And remember, add Healthy Pet. We love your dog, your dog loves you. We hope to see you both in soon and we can answer all your questions on what your grooming tool needs are.